All right. Got that stream loading up here. That's, uh, yeah, that's looking good. All right. We're up and running. 404 guy here. 7HE404. GUI back with some Kerbal Space program before we get into the episode. Warning. This program contains coarse humor and a sense of language that some people might not share. Viewer discretion is advised. But uh, I bet that just makes you want to watch it even more. It's nighttime here at Kerbal Space Center. Normally, everyone would be sleeping. But not us. Let's see what we got here. All right. So, last episode, we made it to Eve, which is pretty cool. The atmosphere was very thick, uh, so we almost didn't make it. But, you know, a quick save here and a quick save there, and we, uh, we landed on the surface. So... What we're going to do, since I so obviously forgot this last episode, we're going to take the Eve probe. Oh, jeez, that is expensive. Okay. Duma? I don't know. I need to build something that'll get to Duna, basically. But it needs to be something cheap, so I don't want to use most of those. We need something cheap that'll get us to Duna. Because, um, I've got that Duna thing there that needs to be powered, basically. Let's stick one of these big-ass engines on here. There we go. This one. This one's my favorite. We gotta get some coupling on the sides here. Still don't have those pylons. Okay. Do some of these. I'm gonna wiggle my nose and get one of these up. No, not one of these. Well, I guess one of these will work. We want this to be cheap, but we want this to make it there. Is uh, kind of the key. We'll do a couple of these. Uh, I think this is already too heavy. Hold on, that's... Uh, we'll need some of these. Cripes, look at that price already. Okay. What else have we got? I mean, I just need something that'll make it to Duna, basically, but I don't want it to take forever. Uh, we have these commsats. Data storage. And the Duna science module. I mean... Jeez, this EVE probe is, is friggin' cheap. That'll get to Duna, too. Let's just... Yeah, we'll use this. We don't need this on the top. Uh, what we do need, though, is uh, some electrical stuff. So we'll get some electrical stuff. That'll do a thousand. Alright, that's nice. Get some of these batteries. And we'll put the claw on the front. Oops. What's that attached to? Okay. Alright, that'll more or less get what we need. That'll take us to Duna. It's maneuverable, it's got communications, so it shouldn't die. Now what, we, what I really want to do here is uh, replace this engine. This guy right here. He's not cool enough to roll with us. And I want to replace this core also. Okay, so we'll get rid of this. Obviously I'm not going to save these changes because... That would be saving a classical design, or that'd be, yeah, saving over a classical design. Which I don't exactly want to do. That's 4, 8, 6, 12, 1200. 1200 units of liquid fuel. And we'll have, where's our favorite engine here? There he is. The Nervy engine. Okay, this is a piece of structural fuselage. That's not a big deal. Too big. All right that on there. I mean, yeah, it's expensive, but the alternative is it'll take us forever to get there. So, 150k <coughs> for what is essentially the delivery of a battery. Huh. 
Uh -huh, I almost saved it there. So onwards and outwards to Duna is the plan. This time I got some water next to me, so I won't be coughing the entire stream. What do we got? These ones, these ones gotta go way later. Way later. Four and four, these gotta go way later. Alright, that'll work. What do we got here? Where are we? We're on the opposite side of the planet. We need to be taking off this way. I think we can do that. Let's wait until morning. I love how you can't time warp below like a certain altitude. But as long as you're stationary, you can warp as much as you like. Come on. Okay, it's not letting me. I take it back. Come on, what are you doing? Quit friggin... Thank you. Jeez. All right. It's a little closer. There we go. All right, here we go. More or less going straight here. Look at this thing. It looks so stupid. <laughs> I like that. All right, so this is going to be the first one heading to Duna. Heading to Duna. That's the big red one. All right, what altitude are we looking here? We are looking at 56K. Let's uh, kick it into high gear now. Okay. Not terrible, not great, but not terrible. How's our altitude growing there? Not as much as hoped, but is growing. How much specific impulse are we getting here? 320? Yeah, that's about where it should be. All right. Let us start pointing ourselves in the direction of the prograde. Right there now, can't we? All right, we're high enough. I think we can get rid of this uh, this protective shell. Shed some of that weight that's holding us back. Good enough. All right. Out of atmosphere and into the unknown. Although the unknown is very mostly known. So these will all go at the same time. That'll be interesting. Come on, keep that climb rate up for me. This will certainly be an interesting trip to Duna. What the hell is that? Lisbon's crap? What's Lisbon's crap doing here? Holy crap, that was such a close call. Look at that. It passed right under us. Friggin' like 24 kilometers in terms of, uh, in terms of aviation. Specifically like space stuff. That, that's like, that's a near miss. Holy crap, we just had a near miss with Liz Pond's crap. There it is. That was close. Right, almost out of uh, liquid fuel on this second stage. And there we go, let's uh, hit it. it. Doesn't need to be on right now. Come on, just get us out of atmosphere here.
But our target's going to be Duna this time. I'm actually, I might do an atmospheric burn or I might not. Or an atmospheric... Aerodynamic braking. Three episodes I've been trying to remember that uh, phrase. We might do some aerodynamic braking at Duna. But I'm not sure. Alright. So this works as planned. That'll be in the direction of prograde. Ooh, that is... Okay, I guess Eve is a lot closer than Duna. So we'll have to see how that works. Or if that works. Um, I mean, I think with this uh, with this nerve engine, we should have enough fuel to make it to Duna. And then this top bit is just like... This is just lightweight stuff here. I guess I can extend these solar panels too. A spacecraft designed to make it to Eve. Will it make it to Duna? We shall see. Here we go. All right. On an escape trajectory from Kerbin. That's good. We are halfway to Duna. Almost. A little less than halfway, but let's set our target. So, right about... No, I'm not setting it. Stop clicking on stuff. Come on. Uh, right there, add a maneuver. And we're gonna see how close we are. It's actually, this looks pretty close. Alright, we're gonna be there, target's gonna be there. Let's wait a little longer. Go here. No! Damn it. Set target my ass, I wanna add a maneuver. Alright, how close are we now? Alright, that's a little closer. So if we wait half a year, that's where this ascending note is. Man, this is just like spaghetti. All right, that's going to be our closest. So we got to wait to uh, somewhere around here then. And then we'll be right on that collision course. I want to just perfectly adjust this here. Okay, we need to wait a little longer. A little longer than a year. Okay, maybe a little less than a year. What do I know? Let's bring it back here. Chronologically, this is just adjusting our burn by a matter of a few days. Okay. Okay, this is playing with me now. Come on. Alright, here's what we're going to do. We're going to bring this in just a little bit here. And hey, look at that! Collision. Uh, that didn't actually change our burn time all that much, so let's go there. Alright. We should have electricity when we get there. I don't know if these are going to block us at all, or they might. Huh. I wonder why this says I don't have enough fuel. That's weird. I think my staging is just so messed up. Why does this red thing always show up? I don't... I never agreed to that red mission. Okay. All of a sudden, we are no longer on collision course. I hate it when it does that. It gets your hopes up. You think, oh, it's going to be fine, and then... Suddenly, your separation is ten times more. Let's go here. I'll just have to adjust it once we get kind of close. All right. Come on. All right, that looks somewhat decent. Let's keep it there and kick it. All right. Next, since I didn't stage this properly, I gotta do this manually. There, and one more, come on. There she goes. All right, thank you so much. Bye. -bye. 
So that should, I guess, bring us pretty close anyway. Matter of two minutes on uh, what is basically an adjustment that we set for over ten days. So, arm that. It's armless. Ha ha ha. Why did I say that? I just made an idiot of myself. This has about two minutes to go. We have more than enough fuel for that. What I should be doing right now is fuel calculations. How much are we going to have when we get there? So we've got about 1160. So that'll leave us with about 900 once we get there. Which is uh, roughly 10 minutes? Close to 10 minutes, I think. I don't know. Close to 10 minutes of fuel. That seems wrong, but I mean, it's burning at a rate of 1.53. So 153 is 10 seconds. Hold on, I, I'm doing something wrong here. 153 is 10 seconds. 1,530 would be 1,000 seconds. No. 153 is 100 seconds. What am I talking about? My math facilities are failing. Okay. Anyway, looking at this, we should have more than enough fuel once we get there. So let's just keep this pointed at our target. And then hopefully, if this uh, if this mission wraps up quickly enough, we can try sending another probe over to uh, to Eve. I want to try and make um, one of those science orbiter things, uh, mobile research or mobile data processing labs. I want to get one of those on Eve. It seems like that's like rich ground for science data. So, kind of want to do that if I can. It's too bad you can't transmit data across the Kerbal network and just send research data to a mobile data processing lab. Okay, hold on. Focus view here. We just missed it. We just missed it by a little bit. I was pointing 0, 09 or 0. We want to be pointing at 270 for this little correction. We're close to 270. We're pretty good right there. There it is. There she is. Okay. Thank you. Wow, that's way down there. Okay. That's going to be our final target. So we can clear this now. And wherever we are, we now want to do a burn in the normal direction. Where is it? There it is. Okay, let's go. Oops, wrong way. That's on the upper, opposite side of the solar system we're going to be meeting, so we've got to go this way. Alright, that looks very bad. That looks terrible. But we can fix it. Whoop! Too far. I should be adjusting this at our, uh, at our ascending node. Because this is going to be a major adjustment once we get there. Hold on. Come on. Get back there. Thank you. All right, that's looking good right there, actually. We can adjust from that. That looks uh, that looks pretty good. Looking at three seconds of burn. Once we get to the node, come on, get back here. Let's warp there. I notice a lot of people have very angry opinions about the fact that I have uh, on the YouTube channel the... Uh, the Everlasting Summer read-through. I mean, that's going to be done on Wednesday, so not much left to worry about with that. But I mean, someone specifically requested that I... that I uh, play through that game, and if someone specifically requests me to play a game, I'm kind of inclined to do it. 35 seconds. So if there are any suggestions for other games... 
you know. Leave them in the chat, or in the comments section, or wherever. How are we doing here? Is this close to what we wanted? This is reasonable, I want to say. That's not good at all. Look at that. Now bring that up a little here. Just a bit more. Perfect. All right, that's what I want. Once we get here, in about a year. Wow. There we go. That'll bring us right in, and we're going the wrong way. Damn. That's going to suck. Yeah, we're going the wrong direction. Darn it. Okay, hold on. Let us adjust that just a wee bit more. Where are you, Duna? There you are. Yeah, that's on the opposite side of the planet. Hold on. Where do we want to be here? We want to be on the other side when we come in. Whoops. Oops. Minor adjustments. Yeah, we're at, uh, we're close enough, or we're far enough away that, look at that, 0.8 meter per second correction. That's practically nothing. Whereas if we had waited until we got to Duna, that would have been like, that would have been spending the rest of our fuel. So it pays off to do your adjustments as early as possible. And there we go. All right, that looks good. Right where we want to be. Into the perigee, how much of a burn do we got before we're in? Quite a bit. Quite a bit of a burn there. Wow, that's a lot, okay. Whoa, hello. All right, so that's two minutes of burn. We have 981. That's going to leave us with very little fuel remaining. It's not going to be ideal by any stretch of the imagination, but I think at the very least it'll work. I think. All right. Well, we'll uh, warp there anyway. Communications should be good and strong there. How are you doing? Wait a minute. Someone was along this red path. I thought I saw something. That's just one of my comm units. Alright, I thought I saw something. I guess I didn't. How are we looking here? We got solar power, mostly. As long as we got a little, we just need to keep the batteries charged. Or even is the sun? There it is. Yeah, I guess I could have rotated this. It's one thing I always have a habit of doing. Is I leave my spacecraft pointing in a way that it doesn't charge up as it's moving around the sun. Like right now, at least it's, you know, it's getting solar power as you can see. But I have a habit of like only having one of these open and then one of them is blocked and then it just runs out of power. All right. Even with the warp, this takes forever. I was talking yesterday. Imagine if I was to uh, if I was to do a no warp playthrough of Kerbal Space Program. A playthrough of Kerbal Space Program where you're not allowed to use the warp function. <laughs> I would starve to death by the end of the second episode. All right, here we are, here we are. Now, as is customary, I'm going to do a quick save. The reason for that is that it's taken us 24 minutes to get here. If it blows up for any reason, I don't want to be spending another 24 minutes doing exactly what you've all just seen. And I feel that's really the best use of quick save. Because sitting around for 24 minutes 
just doesn't seem like fun. I might have started this burn a little bit late. Now, if we can get a stable orbit, I might not do this full burn. I might, uh, might cut it in a little further. That escape note in. All right. Looks like fun. See, so, yeah, I was mentioning on the Minecraft stream the other day, I had my uh, chemistry midterm. Which apparently didn't go so well, but I haven't actually gotten the results from it yet, so I can't really say. Chemistry has never been my strong subject, due in part to the fact that I have a mild dyslexia. But, that being said, I spend like a couple hundred hours studying. We are really close to that science module. Oh well. This is our new target. Okay, what... Is it better to adjust at the ascending node when it's that far out, or is it better to wait until we're at the descending node on the inside? How is this? What is going on here? Where's my... Oh, there she goes. No, I don't want you to hit that, please. The sending node is negative six degrees now. Okay, that's a little far. Negative 16? Come on. Okay, two degrees. That's like an eight second burn. That's actually, that's nothing. Why don't we do that? But yeah, I have a mild dyslexia, and it makes doing chemistry either assignments or midterms very strenuous. But it is what it is. Best way to overcome it is just friggin' study for... I guess three or four times more than what other people study. Huh. All right, here we go. Oh, I forgot to mention. I managed to find some nori seaweed in the most unexpected place. All right, how's this doing? This is looking good. This is looking really good. I'm happy about this. Look at that. Look how much liquid fuel we've got. Jeez. Oop. A little far. That'll be close. That'll be really close. That'll be close enough to count. All right. Let's go there. Got tons of liquid fuel on this guy. Look at that. That'll last us a heck of a long time. Doesn't look like we're going to lose communications anytime soon. That's even better. All right. Let's get a little closer. Not quite. Good. Perfect. All right. How is that for an ascending node? Zero degrees. Even better. Uh, now, we just need to get to an agreeable location. Is that a maneuver here? Whoa! Okay, can we get that really, really close? I think we can get that closer. Look at that. Look at that orange one. Oh, that's perfect. Right there. 4.9k. 
17 seconds of burn. We are going to have so much fuel left over after this that I am just going to toss it at Duna and see if it adjusts the solar orbit. I don't know. Way more fuel than I predicted, though. Which, in some instances, is a bad thing, but in this case, it's a really good thing. Because that means that when I inevitably require 17 attempts at docking, it'll be something I can do. Alright, a little closer to the node, and we should be good. There we go. All right, all right. That is what I'm talking about right there. Tell you what, man. That ought to be good. We can adjust the rest of it in as required. Let's see here. There it goes. 100k. 50k. 10k. All right, we're right on top of it now, which is good. Let's go there. Well, not quite there. We'll go close to there. Target velocity. I've done this docking procedure a million times with a million other spacecraft, and yet I have never had a perfect docking procedure. Something always goes wrong. This time, something might not go wrong. So we'll hope for that. Ah! Get back there. Alright, good enough. And where are we here? There's going to be a separation of 5.7 kilometers. So once we're at 5.7, that should be good. Where is it? Where is it? I saw it for a second there. There it is. Let's go there. Five kilometers is our target. If we get less than that, then that's even better. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, crap! Screw it! God damn it! The hell was that? Ugh. I told you we needed the extra fuel. Jeez, what? Oh my god, that was awful. Okay, let's—I don't know. I don't even know what I'm gonna. How do I recover from that? Oh jeez. Can we? I don't know. Just adjust this somehow to make it good again. Okay, there we go. That's going to be wasting a lot of fuel. God damn this keyboard. I get... I guess it's my setup partially to blame. The fact that my hand is constantly offset on the keyboard by one key because my microphone is in the way. I need a microphone stand, is what I need. Hey, we got the holidays coming up. Maybe I should get a microphone stand. I'm going to get tarot cards. I think that'd be cool to have some tarot cards. Not just because I saw a cool character in an anime with tarot cards, but because... Well, all right, that is the, that is the reason, but that's a good enough reason in my mind. As long as they're not excessively expensive. Here we go. Two. All right, we're losing it here. We're losing it. Come on. Come on, you. Okay, close enough. I'll figure it out from there. How close are we? 16, no, 140. Let's bring that in just a wee bit there. Thank you, thank you. 
We're going to have a very large relative velocity on this. Much larger than we should have. But look at that, 4K. 4K. Let's just add an imaginary maneuver there. That way we don't have to worry about the warp messing up. Alrighty, alrighty. This time I'm keeping my fingers away from that warp button. It's caused me nothing but misery. How are we here? 45 kilometers, okay. That's one. That's two. Okay, now I'm pressing the right key. We need to go retrograde to the target. Adjusting attitude. Commencing burn in T minus three, two, one. Burn commenced. Oh wow, I really should have started that sooner. Uh, Houston, this is not the time for color commentary. Go over. This will, this is actually slowing down pretty good, so that's plenty of liquid fuel. Look at that. I didn't even use up half of it getting here. All right, this is a good approach right here. This time, because I didn't screw up with the warp. So, get that down to zero right there. Nice. Oh, crap. Okay, well, we went a little overboard, but that's just fine. 1.5 meters per second, we can recover that. That's, that's more than decent, I think. Right on target, right there. All right. This target intersect means nothing to me now. The one thing I probably should have put on here is RCS. That's going to be probably something that's going to bite me, but we'll see. Should be heading towards target at a rate of 3 meters per second. Hello, hello. There's our target. All right. We're going to just barely miss it, but that's going to be ideal as opposed to colliding head on. Look at that. That is like... This thing's wobbly, but it's a good approach. We're doing just fine. Doing just fine. All right. Got that auto save action going on there. This looks like a big enough target. I think I can hit it. Oh, that is beautiful. Just look at that. All right. Okay, that is just what I want to see here. My friend. I wish I could target the bottom half of it because I really don't want to smash into those solar panels. But this is really nice. This is really nice. This battery delivery is going great. Alright, we're looking good. Keep it slow, keep it stable. Two, one, all right. Effectively null velocity. Whoops, wrong way. Come on, pull that nose up. I have to align this manually because looking at this, it does not appear as though it is going to let me target the lower half of this. So I'm going to have to just... Whoa! That's a big swing. Come on. That nose up, get that nose up. Rope, rope, rope. Too far, too far, too far, too far. Get that nose down, get that nose down. 
How are we? We are not anywhere near pointing at that. Come on. Get that nose down. Get that nose down. All right. All right. All right. All right. We're looking good. We're pointing sort of at it a little bit. Maybe move it a little bit this way. Get that nose up just a little bit. Move it back. I think that'll hit. Need about two meter per second relative velocity for it to work. Here we go, buddy. Hey, this is scaring me. Doesn't the other one have RCS on it? I could have just gone to the other. Oh well. We'll see what happens with this. Keep our nose pointed. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What am I doing? What am I doing? Keep it pointed down here. That nose down, get that nose up there. Come on, come on, come on. All right, we're looking good. This is this is a good approach. Come on, clip it, clip it. Yes, oh yes, that was beautiful. Well done, well done indeed. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Get those solar panels out, buddy. You deserve a cracker. All right. Now we can transmit some of the science. Uh, so let's get up with that. Um, where are we here? Transmit science. Thank you. We should be able to do that without completely depleting our electric resource. Look at that. All right. We now have an additional 500 science, and uh, we've completed a contract apparently. That's nice. Okay, we haven't transferred crew between vessels. I guess I could have sent someone along the mission, but whatever. This is good. This is great. This is just what I want to see. I think I might actually also have some science stuff on here somewhere. No? I thought I did. If it is, it's well hidden. It is very well hidden. I thought I had some. No, I guess I don't. Okay. Well. Oh, well. Uh, that was good. Let's go back to the Space Center. All right. Wow, that only took 43 minutes to do that uh, whole maneuver there. Let's see what we want to buy with our newfound science. <clears throat> So, we can buy the RGU and the Hex 2. That's a nice rhyme. We can buy some advanced motors. These things are gigantic, actually. Like, they don't really show it in here, but these this thing is freaking huge. Um, hypersonic flight. That's that's a good step on the way for this, um, this Rapier engine. It's decent. Or we can just get this giant fuel thing. Um... Can't afford the thousands. The thousands don't really have anything good anyway. I'm kind of thinking hypersonic flight. Because then this we can take to EVE and um, do cool things on EVE. So I'm going to research this one. And then while we're doing our science management here, I'm also going to take a look at a couple of, uh, of our other scientific orbiter stations. Wow, this is... This is one spaghetti-looking orbit tracker. Crisscrossing orbits all over the place. All right. Do you have science to transmit? No, you don't. What have you been doing up here? Let's go to the moon, then. Let's see if this one has science to transmit. Ah, Bob. Bob A. You got some science for me. Look at him, he's just friggin' wasting his time up here. Jeez. What's this guy been doing? 
This is one hell of a research station, by the way. Look at this. How many parts is that? Yikes. That is 332 parts. It's pretty good. Alright, what one were we going for? I think Intermodal was the science researcher on this one. Something like that. Ah, yes. Intermodal was not. This is where Valentina is permanently stationed. Because I forgot how to get her back safely. No, we don't want intermodal. We want just great. We'll see just how great this science research station is. All right, Nefrod. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. Look at that. Ah, uh, it goes and goes and goes and goes. Where it stops, nobody knows. 300. We're going to hit 400? We might. I mean, it's been there for a hell of a long time, so if it's not at least... I mean, theoretically, it should be full. It's been like two years. Wow. Wow. What I say, it's a friggin' science multiplier. This is just free science putting these uh, mobile data processing labs up here. Look at that. Holy smokes. It's gonna fill up. Oh, it stopped at 486. That's still pretty damn good, isn't it? All right, we can now afford yet another sciencey thing. Let's go back. Our science research must have paid off. We should be able to buy a new thingy. So, what's it gonna be? Fuel, motors, or unmanned tech? What is this actually, this remote guidance unit, what does it actually do? Stability, prograde, retrograde. Oh, it does maneuver hold. Okay. I can see the value in that. This, what does this do? This does more like, kind of the same, I guess. Okay. I can see the value in these two. This actually, this has a lot of electric charge on it. All right, we'll research those. Why not? Next ones are going to be in the thousands, I think. Uh, I don't know how valuable these motors are. I've never actually used either of these. These are just like these are gigantic. So I don't know how much uh, use I'll get out of those. But science data from space around Eve. We can do that. Uh. Surface outpost on Eve? Nah. I don't like surface outposts because they're kind of not really something that you can do with the default parts. Anyway, that looks like it for uh, today's episode. we have uh, I was thinking of going to Eve again, uh, sending a second probe to Eve, but I kind of decided against it now. Uh, next episode, probably going to be next week, 7 p.m. on Saturday. Going to be looking at trying to get a mobile data processing lab in Orbit of Eve. So stay tuned for that next week. And there might be some random stuff in the middle of the week, I don't know. On the YouTube channel, there's definitely that uh, Everlasting Summer, which is going to be finished on Wednesday, so don't yell at me if it's a lot of stuff being posted. I'm the 404 guy, 7HE404GUY. Thanks for tuning in. Feel free to subscribe, follow, share. Let your friends know the 404 guy is epic. And if you want. I don't know. I don't get paid for this, so it doesn't really bother me. Anyway, 
One thing you should definitely do, though, is have yourself a great day. Thanks for tuning in. Bye, everybody. I get to research some oh man I don't even remember what these things are called relaxation methods relaxation methods that's what I'm gonna be researching the next few hours sounds a lot more fun than it is what do you got you got the point Jacoby method you got Gauss Seidel you got successive over relaxation. What else we got here? Yeah, we got uh, those are stationary methods, and we got non stationary methods. This is all uh, relating to numerical analysis and uh, finite element analysis, computational fluid dynamics, all that fun stuff. Interestingly enough, very little computational fluid dynamics is related to aerospace. Aerospace is like a very tiny sliver of computational fluid dynamics as a whole. Because a lot of computational fluid dynamics is like ventilation systems. And like heating systems for the cars and all that stuff. And yet you can do so much cool things with the, uh, the aerospace applications. Have a great day, everyone.